perfect. Hello again, pinball people and arcade aficionados. Welcome to another edition of Pinball Repair and Restoration. In this episode, we're going to be working on two classic Bally Blackjack pinball machines. The first step in any pinball restoration project is to give the machines a good visual inspection, determine what parts, if any, we want to order, and decide what we want in terms of a finished product. That will determine how much time and effort will go into the restoration of the machine. In this case, I want to end up with a clean, reliable machine that plays well. I'm not going to go all out on the restoration of these machines, but I do want to make them reliable and playing like new. This title is an absolute classic coming out at the dawn of the solid state era and featuring the chimes and charm of an electromechanical pinball with modern style neon displays and digital electronics under the hood. These machines are another cool piece of pinball history and I'm looking forward to bringing them back to life. So let's get started with an overall inspection of the machines. Okay, now that I've got the games home safe and sound, I'm just going to give them a good look over, figure out exactly what I'm going to be dealing with here. These basically were sold to me as shopped out working games, so I'm not expecting that I'm going to have too much trouble with them. We can see by the look of the rubbers and just the overall look of the playfield that yes, they have been cleaned, the rubbers have been replaced recently. This one, the rubbers are a little dirty. I'm probably going to end up stripping both playfields down anyway and just re-clean, re-wax, uh, possibly reuse some of the rubbers, but most likely just install new rubbers. I can see right away with the back glass that I'm going to have some issues. On the surface it looks okay, but when we look closer, we can see that there's some big chunks of paint which are getting ready to just fall right off. So they both actually look decent on the surface. This one we can see has had a bit more touch-up work done to it. Also, there's a big chunk of paint missing there. What I will have to do with these, unfortunately, is apply some kind of a clear coat to the back glasses to fix up these big flaky bits of paint. Now, normally I would try to avoid doing that because they don't really hold up well to temperature change once they've been cleared, which I've found over the years, but it's pretty unavoidable with these two. There's Alltech Ultimate MPUs in these, which is nice. The other boards also are present, so it shouldn't be too tricky to get these both up and running. Now this looks like it was already sealed once and then just didn't really hold up. So this has pretty much been caught exactly in time because there are some major sections where the paint is just coming right off. We should be able to retain that with another coat of clear. We'll just have to make sure that it's not put through extreme temperature changes and it's treated delicately. Otherwise, we're going to just end up in this same situation. And this one is the same deal. Not quite as bad. More touch-up work on this one. Caught these just in time. Well, actually about 20 years past just in time, but close enough. We should be able to salvage both of them and they'll look half decent. Now let's open up the heads and see what we find inside. But first, let's just take a little glance at the displays. This digit's X'd out. I can imagine that's probably not working, so we'll see what happens with that one. They look pretty good just on the surface of it. And uh, there's, you know, nothing major ugly happening so we'll see how they work once we get the game powered up so here's the first one we can see we've got the uh, the Alltech board there so that's nice the lamp driver is pretty clean we can see they've nicely labeled things so that's kinda nice now here's our power uh, solenoid driver board slash voltage regulator and we can see again we've got a cap just hanging loose so that'll be familiar to, to you if you've watched my other videos. Let's move down to the bottom head and again we have an Alltech MPU, fairly clean lamp driver board and there we go our power supply solenoid driver board slash voltage regulator board looks pretty clean as well. This one again our cap is just hanging out in space and there's not really much else that's been done to it as far as I can tell in terms of upgrades. Let's just take a closer look at the rectifier boards and looks pretty much original, not 
any work done to that so we'll do a rebuild on that sucker they've taped off those connections for some reason it's safety first I guess since the cage is missing which is present on this one and the same deal this one looks like actually maybe the fuse clips were replaced and that's about it so a rebuild there there's gonna be a bunch of preventative maintenance kind of work which I'll do to this maybe end up replacing some connectors maybe rebuilding some sections of the power supply on one of the two games but at this point I'll take a look at the play fields and then get something set up and start testing these boards now I have the games basically disassembled everything looks pretty good the cabinets don't seem to have any water damage or anything there's some scuffing and stuff but not too bad overall the chime boxes on both machines seem to be there and relatively complete I did notice though that there was one coil in the bottom of the game which looks like a chime coil so we'll see what that's all about a bunch of lamps and crap in the bottom of this one somewhat less lamps and crap in the bottom of this one uh, probably a manual there so that's cool there's the play fields I've pulled them out of the cabinets so we'll just take a closer look at the play fields see if there's anything that we need to order and just get a general idea of what to expect when we actually go to put these back together and restore the games so they're in good playing condition the coin door is a little beat up on this one it's got a little bit of weird kind of denting it looks like it's been kicked in and then bashed back out or something at some point this one actually looks pretty good on this side the next thing that I'm gonna do is just take a look at these play fields and decide if there's any parts that I need to order if there's any mechanisms which are broken or anything like that so just looking at them we can see that they're actually pretty clean for a game of this age and I've looked them over briefly and decided that really I'm just gonna need to do the basic maintenance type items on this play field so I'll replace all the links I'll replace the flipper links I'll also replace the bushing on these games I don't think I'll do the full flipper kit because the switches and the pawl and stuff and the plungers look decent enough the coil stops are kind of messed up a little bit but I should be able to fix that as well I'll also replace the links in the slingshots and the, uh, the pop bumpers look pretty good I'll just put in new pop bumper bodies and skirts as necessary I'll, I'll replace the skirts and the bodies for all the pop bumpers the metal parts look to be pretty good. Everything else looks to be pretty decent, so I'll replace the coil sleeve on that guy. The other play field's basically the same thing. Now, on this one, I can see that quite a few of the lamps, if not all of the lamps, have already been replaced. On the other one, it looks like a few have been replaced, so on that one, I'll probably just end up replacing all of them. On this one, though, it looks like they were all replaced, so I might end up getting away with just leaving those. And again on this one, you know, just the flipper links and the same deal with this one on the slingshots. Just replace those links, replace the coil sleeves. So that's all sorted out. I will have to order some parts, but it shouldn't be too bad now. Let's just flip these over and take a look at the other side and see if there's any plastic parts which are broken. Any switches that we might need to order. Now I'm lucky with these two games because reproduction plastics and pop bumper caps are available for the game so if I did actually need either of those items I, I wouldn't have to go scrounging around trying to find them but luckily we can see that both of these games are actually in pretty decent condition with somewhat minimal playfield wear but all the plastics are there and in decent shape the pop bumper caps are in decent shape now these games were supposed to have been shopped out when I got them which you can see some evidence of that but you know there's these ratty old pop bumper skirts and bodies stuff like that there's just you know the, the little detail work hasn't quite been finished up the flipper bats look decent on both uh, yeah like I said the, the plastics actually look pretty good I'll, I'll order that switch I might end up just replacing both of these because they kind of face right to where the players looking down the play field these two look okay these ones on this side these all look okay the pop bumper caps on both games look good and again you know just the original uh, skirts and bodies are there so those will be replaced 
Well, that pretty much covers an overview of these Bally Blackjack pinball machines and what we need to do to get them up and running. I think I'll break this video up into multiple parts, so this will just be the assessment phase of the project. In the next video, I'll get one of the cabinets up on legs and I'll just get one of the games generally set up. I'll start going through repairing all the electronics and then once that's done, we will shop out the play fields and the games will be basically complete. Now the back glasses, as we saw, had some flaking and some damage, so I'll also do a video of trying to seal that and save those back glasses. So you can see we've got some cleaning here to do, it's pretty cluttery, but overall these are actually pretty decent games and I think they're going to come out fairly nice when they're finished. So if you like the video, subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up. If you have a question or comment, do it down below. I'll see you in the next one.